We have ignition. We have ignition, Ben. Welcome back to another episode of Wrench. On this show, we are going to begin the process of rewiring my 1969 911S with all new aftermarket wiring. Problem is, I don't know shit about wiring. Okay, welcome back. If you are brand new to this channel, please do me a favor and hit subscribe, hit that notification bell. I know everybody says that, but I am so dangerously close to getting 10,000 subscribers. And like a month ago, I had 4,500. So it is a really huge thing for me if you decide to hit subscribe and see me floundering through all of this wiring. Now, on this table, I have two very disparate types of wiring. On one side, I have the Highway 22 from American Auto Wire. I did an entire unboxing video on this kit. This is a, a basic chassis wiring kit for hot rods. It comes with a very modern fuse panel. It comes with sections of wires already cordoned off with their own wiring diagrams that you, like here's the headlight switch connection kit. So that kind of thing is like already kitted out and separated. In this corner, we have the Haltech Elite 2500 ECU. This on the other hand, is the bleeding edge of technology as it pertains to cars. This thing has pretty much every feature you can think of and a lot of things you can't think of. Launch control, anti-lag turbo, drive-by wire. I mean, it's like this thing goes on and on and on, connects to CAN bus. It is all digital, laptop based. You can tune it with an iPhone or a laptop and it is like the polar opposite of this. Now, these two things somehow intermingle, you know, in that this one has like a starter set up, this one has a starter set up, so I have to figure out which one I'm gonna use, probably this. The more things I can run through the engine management, the higher tech, the car can be because like a, a specific instance is if I wire the radio through the hall tech, it can look at the speed sensor. And if it knows that I'm at 70 miles an hour and thus the car will be louder, it can turn the stereo up. Pretty cool. I can add launch control and cruise control to this car, which is 52 years old now. There's a lot of really cool things this thing can do. Now, when I originally got this, Haltech has a setup for the Subaru EZ30. And what I thought was gonna happen is that I was gonna plug these two plugs into the Haltech. I was gonna run a wiring loom to the back of the car and plug the two plugs into the engine harness. Done, done deal. Crocodile done deal. Dunzel Washington. Unfortunately, that was not the case. And when I went to do the unboxing video on this, I realized I actually had the wrong part. I do want to thank Haltech for being a sponsor of the Blasphemy Build. Uh, these guys do such incredible things. I found out about them through Mighty Car Mods, like many of you guys did as well. And I'm really excited to see what can be done with this very nice piece of kit. So here's the plan for this video. I need to figure out just the basics. I've never wired a chassis before. It confuses me quite a bit. Uh, the plan for this episode is I wanna get the basics of these two harnesses woven through the car. I wanna find a location for this. I wanna find a location for this. I want to pull this thing into the rear of the car. One thing I'd like to note, by the way, thank you, Haltech, for labeling this harness. This is their universal harness. So this thing is gonna plug into the ECU as such, right? Plug the ECU and then this all runs back to the engine. And uh, yeah, it's a little terrifying. Finding places for these two things will be the first thing to do. I have a general idea of where the hall tech's gonna go. I think under the driver's seat. This one I'm not so sure about. I'm using this battery, which is the venerable Odyssey PC925. So that has to find a home somewhere. Um, typically you'd put it in the smuggler's box, but 
if I'm doing the classic retrofit air conditioning, which I think I am, that takes up the smuggler's box. So I might have to find a, another location for the battery, split these things off and start running them to where they kind of need to run, like wiring pathways. So I need to drill holes and get grommets and things like that. That's the goal of today. If I can get the body done and then get the engine fired before the end of February, I think I'm in pretty good shape for, you know, the next few months and the SEMA build. Okay, let's get right into it. Now, under this seat, it's a pretty standard ECU spot. In most 911s, this is where the factory ECU is. It goes this way, through a big bushing, and then into the engine compartment. In this current back section, I've got a riveted in piece here, just by itself. It's got one big rivet on it. So I'm gonna get underneath the car, grind this thing off, and pull this piece off. I think right there is where the main fuse panel of the car is gonna go. What's cool about that is that pipe right there. You see that pipe sticking out? There's another one right here, this black guy. That runs all the way along the tunnel and then pops out right there. So if I can use some sort of snake to get through there, then I can do a really nice wiring job from the fuse panel to the back of the car. Now, just on the passenger side here, this American Auto Wire fuse panel looks like it's perfect. Like you can see, first of all, everything's labeled and colored, which is super cool. And I think right here is a perfect spot for it. It just, I mean, it just tucks in beautifully into this little corner. Super cool thing about both of these kits is they both came with pretty extensive wiring diagrams. And that definitely makes me feel a little better about this. I think I'm gonna to try to wire the American Auto Wire kit and then the Haltech kit will supersede anything that the American Auto Wire kit does. Okay, I think I've made some sense of this now. It's taken me about 20 minutes to kind of figure it out. Here's how it's set up. This thing came with a headlight switch. Super hot rod kind of vibe. It's actually kind of cool. Um, I'll probably not use any of this stuff, but if I do, this is actually pretty sweet because the plug is already made for it. This thing plugs right into the back of this switch. It's got a cool little hot rod knob on it. And then this is the dimmer. So. This is low beam, high beam, like super old school hot rod style. Mine will be on the stock, of course. Um, but for now, I can run these wires up kind of near the dashboard. So that way I have enough wire to run it to the stock. But that is that. I actually found an old light that I had. So what I thought I'd do is just tap it on the battery here and see if I can get the light to actually function. All right. There we go. Light. So as you can see, I've taken off this blanking plate that the previous owner had put on. This originally fed the valves that changed the heat you know, from the floor, which would come in from right here to the dashboard. But this is the bottom of the valve and this is where the tube would come up. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna use this hole to feed the wires in. And then eventually I'm gonna weld a plate that's basically like the same shape and size. And I've gotten this whole kit from Amazon, which is just a ton of grommets and O-rings. So. I'll use the one that's like the smallest possible one for this particular thing and then uh, weld it all up so it looks really good. So how the system works is you run it to one side of the headlights you splice it together 
here, and then you run it to the other side. So they have the same circuit that they're running off of. You just attach these three wires. We've got high beam, low beam, and parking lights. And I'm just attaching with some zip ties. This is one of my favorite tools to use. It's just very satisfying. It's just the quickest wire stripper you've ever seen. This one's made by Vice Grip. I think I got it at Home Depot. But uh, I love it. it. Just goes and just rips the things right off. So I think I actually have the wrong crimpers for this, but I'm gonna make do with what I have. One of the things I learned at this little motorsport wiring seminar I took is that you're not you're not ever really supposed to twist wires. In this case, in the end, they stand side by side. Of course, a lot of this will have to be cut out and redone when the actual wiring of the car happens, but I need to get things like functional so that I know that it works. Next stage, I found what I have to do, which is get into the mega fuse kit. So these things come with mega fuses. That's what it's called. And these holders. And so what we do is we put a mega fuse. We connect one side to the battery. The other side goes to my little box here, my little situation. So let me put the mega fuse in right now. There's that. By the way, I'm already like challenged with this and it could not be more clear. So I can't imagine if I have to do this from scratch, how much of a pain in the ass it would be. All right, this is the ignition and starter connection kit. I think I need it so that I can ground this. I'm pretty sure. What's up? It's the next day. Now I spent until two in the morning working on this car yesterday. And I didn't film most of it because it was so much logistical stuff. It's so much decision making and trying something out and going, oh, that doesn't work. And it just wasn't good content. I tried to film for a while and it was just, it just didn't make any sense. But let me show you guys where I am. Uh, this garage is an absolute disaster at the moment. But let me show you where I am with the wiring and some of the decisions I've made. I've made a, a number of pretty big decisions for the build. And I wanna show you guys what I've done. And I've temporarily mounted the fuse panel. I've actually decided to do the uh, ignition switch and the light switch. So they're actually in place. The, the dimmer is installed. Uh, I've got a big plan for my starter because I'm gonna have to modify the starter so it clears our custom adapter plate for the Porsche G96 transmission and the Subaru EZ30 engine. If I had my druthers, I could turn a key and, and the engine would turn over by the end of this. I don't know if that will happen, but that is kind of my little pipe dream. So let me give you a quick tour of where we are and the next thing we are going to do. First and foremost, I have the fuse panel mounted up here. There's not really anything connected to it at the moment. I've run all the wires that I need to on the inside, but before I had them running out into the trunk area, they don't actually need to do that. They can stay under the dash. So they are all under here right now, just running that way along the dash. I've got the light switch installed. So that works and then the dimmer turns on this thing. This is the high and low beams, which is typically a foot pedal, but I've got it just connected here because ultimately it will connect to a stalk that runs, you know, my turn signal stalk will be right here and these wires will run to that. These wires are for the ignition switch, which is right here. And uh, that's probably the first thing we're gonna do today is get this thing installed. Next is big major logistical decisions. Now this panel, I may have already talked about it in this video, I don't remember, but this panel is gonna go away because I want something to be flatter and a little bit more, um, something I can put luggage on without you know everything sliding down. It'll probably end up being covered in carpet or whatever I decide to do, but this will ultimately be more of a shelf than it is now. That little section right there up against the right side and on top of that tube, that's where the battery is gonna go. I'm going to put the battery right there. I'm gonna build a little battery box of some sort and weld that in. I may do that today. And that's gonna be where the battery lives. Uh, I'll probably make some kind of port to open up so I can get to the top of the battery in case I need to jump it. Or I may do the kind of thing that modern cars do, which is run a you know, positive and negative lead to a couple of posts 
uh, alternatively somewhere else in the car where you can jump the car really, really easily. So first things first, let's get this ignition switch installed. I don't have the exact right crimp tool, so this makes the process a little bit slower than it would be otherwise. All right, I've got the ignition switch assembled. I'm plugging it in a little bit. These have been proven to be very difficult to remove once they're plugged in, so I'm sort of not going too far with it. And look at these awesome GM keys that will not be there. Don't you worry, they won't be there. Next thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna modify this starter to see if I can clearance it so it looks like this thing comes apart. So I'm gonna to try to see if I can take it apart and get just this top section off. under the car obviously this is the starter what's happening here is that if I try to align the body with these holes it's hitting my uh, adapter plate honestly this this whole top lip needs to go and then some so I'm gonna start with that So that's the clearance. I did pop a hole in there. I may actually have to put some JB Weld in here. There's like a little pocket that I could put some JB Weld in. Let me see if this thing fits first. If it does, then I probably will do a little bit of epoxy there and uh, call it. Unfortunately, I can't seal this thing up because my pressure plate actually goes into this little hole. So I actually need to enlarge this hole a little bit I'm millimeters away from getting this thing right, but I'm gonna give this thing a little cut with the cutting wheel and try to square it off, and that should give me exactly enough. Really close. I literally need like a couple more millimeters of clearance on one edge. So I'm gonna draw a Sharpie line on the edge, and I'm gonna cut it off. Okay, we are good to go. We've got a nice cleaned piece. It is clearance, clearance. So I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna take my simple green and all my cleaning stuff back to the bench. I'm gonna try to clean up as much as I can, re-lubricate everything, assemble a starter for the first time in my life. And hopefully when this is all done, this thing still works, which I may test before I try to install it. And then I'm gonna install it and wire it. And again, if all goes well in my life, when I turn that key over, the engine actually turns, which would be a huge win as far as I'm concerned. moment of truth. Now I don't know if this worked or if I messed this starter up, but I want to see if it physically functions. If you guys don't know how to test a starter, here's how you do it. You need three wires essentially. You need a set of jumper cables. As you go negative on the jumper cable to negative of the body of the starter, you go positive jumper cable 
to the positive of your battery and then positive of this post that's sticking out. It's kind of the main post. Then there's a little, typically there's a little tab. And what that tab is, that's the signal from your ignition uh, that sends it down the ignition signal and it says, hey, if this thing gets power, then I want you to switch on. So what's supposed to happen here is that this thing is supposed to pop out and then spin and that's what spins your flywheel and then begins the process of your engine. So you connect this wire, it's very helpful to have a banana clip, to power and you hope, you cross your fingers that all the work you just did wasn't in vain and the thing actually works. By the way, this will jump, so you might want to hang on to it. Come on, baby. All right. Cool. So what that's doing is it's not engaged with your flywheel. And the second that you turn your ignition switch to the right way, and it flips, it creates the circuit between that solenoid, and then it powers the thing up and starts spinning your flywheel. Once your flywheel starts spinning, then gas and sparks and boom, and then you've got an engine that's running. Let's get this sucker in the car. Right, there it is for the first time. Starter is in. You can see all the clearance I had to give it. The transmission bell housing, all that stuff's gonna be welded up. All right, now, next plan. Now that I have the starter in the car and it's functional, I wanna put the battery where it's supposed to be. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna create a little battery tray, something probably temporary. If it's great, maybe I'll keep it, I don't know. But I have some 18 gauge steel here and I get a chance to use one of my new toys uh, I've just gotten an air compressor and I have a little snipper for it. So let's see if that actually is functional. I'm going to all out, scratch out the size of the tray, bend up all four corners, probably put a little tack weld in each corner so it creates a box. And I'll probably give it a quick coat of paint. And then uh, I'm just going to screw it into the side of the car, the chassis, and rest it for now on what used to be the torsion tube mount of the car. So that's the plan right now. Okay, while the paint dries on the battery tray, I'm gonna go wire up the starter, find a spot for the mega fuse, and run any wires I need to. At that point, I should be able to flip this thing over and hit the bottom with paint. By the way, if you guys are doing any kind of building, I love this satin finish roll bar and chassis from VHT. It's super fast drying. It's good for 250 degrees. Um, it's a high temp paint. I just love how fast it dries. So I'm gonna go in there, come back out. It's gonna be dry already and ready to go. All right, progress. First and foremost, here is my battery tray. And I've put two holes in it just because I thought it would make it easier to put the tech screws in. Um, now this isn't custom fit. I literally like made this the shape of the battery 
in real life, I would do a cardboard template, cardboard aided design, and I would make sure it's sort of custom fit and squared off within the, the body, but I need to remove that whole back section anyway. But I've mounted a big giant mega fuse right by the battery, and so I've put that on this firewall for now, and I'm gonna mount this thing in there, throw the battery in there, and then I can start figuring out where the cables go. The other thing I did off camera is I ran a, a fish tape, like a, a line that you might pull wires through walls. I ran one through the body cavity, all the way under through the rockers, and then up through what would be the heater tube vent right underneath the fuse panel. What's really cool about that is it means that I can run the entire wiring harness. Anything I need to do back to front can go right through that section, which is super cool. Okay, there's the battery and the fuse panels behind it. Next plan is to try to wire it up and wire the starter. And then I think I have to pull the spark plugs on the engine because I really want to see if this thing will turn over when I turn the key, which will be like a huge win. Um, I'm going to do it manually first. I'm going to turn the whole engine over manually just to make sure that it's not interfering with my custom flywheel. So just like the front, the back running lights, tail lights, that kind of thing. They go to one side, connect, and then bridge over to the other. And in this bundle, I have the rear running lights, which is sort of the lights that turn on when you turn your headlights on. I've got third brake light switch. I've got left turn signal and right turn signal. And I think that's it. So running lights, and then in this bundle, which is like the main bundle. I've got power from battery mega fuse to the fuse block, and that is this big thick red one. I've got my um, starter solenoid, which I ran from that side and then back this way so I can run them all under one side. I don't know if that's a good idea or not, but that's what I did. Um, and then the other thing I'm gonna do here is that I've got this fish line uh, running all the way through. I'm gonna put one extra wire in this bundle. And the reason why is because if I leave an extra wire in there that's not attached to anything, I can use that wire to pull any other wires through in the future. So I don't have to like keep using the fish tape. I can just have a wire and it's just a good practice. Top tip, in fact, I think I heard this from Ant Anstead on Wheeler Dealers in the last build they did with the uh, Triumph TR7 when he redid the dashboard. So I thought it was a really great idea. I don't know why I'd never done it before, but basically you just run an extra wire whenever you're pulling wires through, and then you leave that wire in in case you need to pull back. So you just always do an extra wire and then you'll be good to go. What you think, Mr. Ben? What you think? You think that's a good idea? All right. Well, I'm doing it anyway, bro. Whether or not you think it's a good idea, I'm doing it. You know, I'm doing my best here. I'm trying to wire a car. I've never wired a car before. Do you know that? Okay, I've got this nice harness now, and this all goes to the back of the car. Would not surprise me if I ran out of SD card pretty soon. All right, so here's the um, fish tape deal. I got it right here on the end. I've got it zip tied so I didn't lose it. Douche. Okay, so what do we do here? We put this end, which is the other end, we wrap ourselves around this fish tape a few times. We wanna make that leading edge kind of a point so it slithers through. And I've heard some people like lubricate with WD-40 or something like that. I probably won't do that right now, but I mean, it doesn't have to go that far. And I feel like the cavity is pretty good. Okay, that looks like it. So let's begin the guide. I always wondered why they called it fish tape and now this makes a lot more sense. 
A little gentle tugging never hurt anybody. I basically have to make a big loop on the other end so it takes the tension off. It's basically hanging up every time it hits a little piece of electrical tape. Best news is I'm gonna have to do this again once I, you know, wire the car for good. Gotta pull this thing out and, and tape it and all that stuff. But I still have a ton of wires to run and we're still in flux, so no, no need to mess with that now. Okay, as I suspected, I ran out of disc space. Right when I was pulling the loom through, everything went fine, I just wriggled it a little bit. What I'm gonna do now, because I'm right on the edge of being able to pull this thing off, is I'm actually gonna take a, um, I'm gonna take a socket and I'm gonna hand rotate the engine because I still don't know, even though I clearanced my starter, I wanna make sure that nothing is hitting before I like crank the thing over. And this is assuming that it's actually gonna crank. But I'm gonna do it by hand first and make sure that it's cool. If it is, then I've got one more ground I've gotta do up front underneath and I think I'm good. Let me show you guys what I've done. I'll try to come in from this way so you can see it down there, but I've got wires running to the starter. I've got a ground there on the chassis. I've got the mega fuse hooked up. I've got these big old lines. Obviously it won't be that permanently, but that's what uh, is there now. All the wires are pretty much tucked away under here. That is pretty much buttoned up. I've got that one orange wire. That's my little cheater wire. Right now I really only need two wires plugged into the fuse block and that is the um, headlights, accessory, and then this whole thing. So there's a separate little outrigger. This goes to ignition. Yeah, so really I've got, I've got to run this ground and then I'm gonna hand rotate the engine and see where we are. Okay, cross our fingers, we don't hear any weird sounds. And yes, I know this is a torque wrench, it's the biggest half inch I have. Come on. Okay, I heard nothing. We are clear, we are clear. All right, I'm not gonna lie. All I gotta do is connect this negative battery cable and we are weapons hot and I'm a little nervous. All right, let's do it. Can we send it around here? Okay. All right, nothing blew up. Nothing blew up, that's good. I forgot, I totally disconnected my light. So I'm gonna reconnect it right now. Okay, we're connected. Look for light. Light. Ah! Oh, light! 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 Yo! Light! All right. Light, Ben. Woohoo! Okay. Light. Then here's the bright switch. I gotta manually do it. All right, I might be, I might, the brights might be out. But look at that, it does something. <laughs> cool. That's an awesome first test. I'm gonna turn the key, you guys. This is a big, <laughs> this is a big moment. Come here, baby, give me some love. Come on, come on, give me some love. All right, give me some love, I need this right now. You, you got me? You got me? All right, come on. We're gonna turn the key. Let's go. This is the key. Come on. Ready? Come on. Oh! Oh! Yo! Yes! Let's go! That's it, dance with me. Dance with me, Ben. Dance with me, Ben. Ba -ba, da -da, da -da. Uh, all right, I'll give you guys a little taste. Come on! Yes! Oh man, I'm so psyched. You know, I got this car 
I didn't even get a car. I got a shell a year ago, a year and a couple months ago. And that's all it was. It was a piece of metal. And now it's a living thing. And now you can turn a key and energy happens. And it's so cool. I am so psyched. Anyway, I hope you guys like this video. Um, I am trashed physically. <laughs> My whole workshop is trashed. But I have a car right now that you can turn a key. And if I had, you know, plumbing and fuel and some oil in it, it could go choo-choo. I have it. We have ignition. We have ignition, Ben. Guys, thanks for watching. This was super cool. This is like one of the coolest things I've ever done to a car. So thanks for hanging out with me. Um, can't recommend the American Auto Wire uh, Highway 22 enough. If you're wiring an old classic car or something like that, it's great. Now I've got a video coming up with Restoration Design where I'm going to be rewiring the Gray Ghost with a complete OEM harness that they make. And I have to say that just the experience of doing this has simplified so much for me. Um, that loom is what you would do if you wanted to just have a classic car. But if you start with something like this, which is like a bare chassis, and you're not doing a ground up restoration, um, this is great. This thing was awesome. So highly recommended. Phase two of this, of course, is to start integrating the Haltech into it. There's going to be a few things that I've done analog that will be done digitally now. And of course I have another whole mess of wires there, but just the fact that this thing works, I got a headlight to work, I got my starter to work, it's just like mind-bogglingly cool for me. So thank you guys for being here, thanks for hanging out. As always, we are rapidly approaching 10,000 subscribers, so I'm really so thankful to all of you for hanging out with me while I do this, while I experience some of this stuff for the first time. And uh, I appreciate you very much. You guys keep on rocking. I'll talk to you next time.